There's something so unforgettable about starting a Minecraft world with your friends, making memories with your pals, and knowing that you're not alone in this giant blocky universe. But what would happen if this friend of yours just disappeared? In fact, when you look back at the recordings you had with them, they were nowhere to be found. What if someone you thought was your best friend was never real? Two months ago, I was sent an email by a subscriber. Hey Render, I found this Minecraft channel that I think you might be interested in. Out of curiosity, I clicked on the link and found myself on a channel named Alex Speaks. The channel consists of 11 videos. On the surface, it appears to be normal Minecraft videos, but upon a closer inspection at everything reveals some of the most unsettling videos I've ever seen. And it all starts on the first episode. The video starts off with our player in a brand new survival world. They take a look around before typing their first message. Do you ever take things for granted? He wanders around and starts picking up flowers before continuing to write more messages. He explains that he wants to use this channel to talk about his life and whatever's on his mind, he crafts himself a sword, and starts killing more animals while at the same time picking up more flowers. The video cuts, and then our player starts opening up to us. A bit ago my family moved so I can't talk to my old friends as much. He goes on to explain his separation between him and his friends, but right after he writes something that catches me off guard. They might as well be dead or something. Okay, it's a weird choice of words, but he continues talking about the past with his friends and his opinions on moving. But then he does it again. Basically the same as the world ending to some nuclear apocalypse, but then your friends all died already. At this point, the video becomes uncomfortable to watch. He continues comparing his situation to rotting corpses, the dead, and nuclear apocalypse. He finds himself a lava pool to throw away his unneeded items, and out of everything he could throw away, he decides to throw away all the flowers he collected. And that's where the video ends. Although nothing weird happens in the video, it's quite abnormal behavior from our player. The description of the video reads, First video, nothing special. Things will get better, right? The title and description both seem to go back to the player explaining to us how he hates moving and wants to be back home with his friends. This person just appears to be sad, which could explain why he picks up flowers to throw them out. He may just be in a bad mood. Although the way he compares his old friends as being dead is something somewhat odd, but right now we don't know if this truly means anything. One thing I did notice was when the player first joined the world, for some reason it was dark and raining. Loading up a new Minecraft world always starts you off at daytime, so why doesn't it do the same with this player? I think the weather could be symbolic to the player's emotions. Movies and TV shows have used gloomy and rainy weathers to showcase the character's sad emotions, so in the end, this player is just a sad kid who misses his friends. But I had no idea that there was so much more this kid was hiding from us. The video starts with our player in a base. They write to us in chat. I did some mining earlier, but the recording is an opening. I don't know why. I uploaded it to Drive anyway and put the link in the description if anyone could figure out why it isn't working. In the description, they do put a Google Drive link that sends us a video, but we'll get back to that later because moments after writing his message, we get this. We get introduced to another character named find underscore Nula. Nula gives wood and our player gives them armor and tools. He pulls up a picture of a house that he'd like to build and begins doing so. Time passes until Nula asks them where they got the house idea from. He says it was a house on an old friend's Minecraft server. It's obvious he still misses his old friends in an attempt to recreate the past. Out of the blue, he randomly writes, I miss them a lot. Then Nula says, you have me. Then he pauses for a second before typing, yeah. They continue building until he says his mom is making him get off, and the video ends. 
Before we review this footage, what is in the Google Drive link? If you paste it on a search bar, we're given a video, a video of our player and Nula in a black room. This obviously isn't the right video. He complains that the recording of him mining was an opening, but this doesn't seem to match with what he was talking about. Instead, we get a 7 minute video of our player staring at Nula. This video is in a loop because at 3 minutes and 10 seconds, he writes a few messages. Do you ever wish you could turn back time? Speak to me. Why won't you answer me? After that, the rest of the video is spent staring at Nula. We have two videos to dissect, so in order to understand everything, we'll have to start with the YouTube video first. Let's start from the beginning of the video. We get introduced to Nula. From the title of the video and the way they communicate, it's obvious this is a friend of theirs. But while they're talking to each other, there's something weird that happens. I'll play the clip for you, and I want you to see if you could point out what I'm talking about. If you still didn't see it, I'll play it back. When Nula goes to drop the items, they just disappear. We can see moments prior, our player's inventory is nowhere near full, and Nula dropped the item, so he has extra inventory space, but somehow no one picks it up. It's a small detail, but very strange nonetheless. No other occurrences happen in the video, but we can see our player continue to talk about his old friends and attempts to recreate those feelings. Even when Nula tells him, you have me, me, he pauses for a few seconds before typing the words, yeah. In fact, I'm not too sure if they're even friends. This 7 minute video is the strangest thing we've seen so far. Nula doesn't even seem like they're a person in this video. Our player is obviously having a one-sided conversation with Nula in an attempt to speak with them. But for Nula, they don't ever move. And this voidless room they're in doesn't help us answer anything. Instead, we're left with more questions. But with questions, our answers, and episode 3 might just give us that. Episode 3 is named New House. It looks like our player is looking at the image we saw last video and comparing it to the one he built. He then types in chat, Everyone kept saying people at new schools will be really nice. He crafts himself a bucket and a hoe, and he writes to us some more before Nula finds him. What's this? Oh, just thinking and making a farm for you. Then Nula asks them how he's doing, to which he responds with, I miss being helpful. He continues ranting while Nula is placing a fence around his farm, but then Nula says that's a nice farm and a few seconds after nula also replies with thanks he replies for our protagonist but they don't seem to notice or care because right after he complains the roof isn't right compared to the original screenshot so they planned on looking for a dark oak forest but moments before the video cuts we see this We can just barely see something disappear through the window of the house. From a more clear frame, we can see the thing that disappeared where the fences Nula placed. How do we know this isn't just a poor video quality messing with us? Well, if we really want to know, we'll have to finish the rest of the video. The next scene starts off with our player typing. Do people make fun of your name? Noah? No, like Matthew. We find out that Nula's name is Matthew, but then our player types people just... I don't know. And then Matthew replies with, this school sucks. The video cuts again with our player mentioning that he has a cool project partner, and as he's typing some more about his school activities, he loses Matthew. He then seems to stare at something before another cut happens, where he seems to be in a dark oak forest. There, he stumbles upon a village, and right behind him is Matthew suddenly appearing out of nowhere after disappearing a few moments ago. Before he could react, Matthew says, there's books here, and he runs off into the village. As our player is collecting books, Matthew tells him there's a blacksmith. When he makes his way to the blacksmith, we can see what seems to be a burning building. He takes a look at it before ignoring it and entering inside to collect the items in the chest. They finally get the dark oak logs they needed and decide to head on back home. Then the video cuts to Matthew staring at something. When our player goes to check out what happened, he looks and sees Matthew's house is completely gone. And that's where we get a final message. I think there's someone else here. Where do I even start? 
With all of the things I pointed out, there was still so much more left unnoticed. Let's start off with Matthew's behavior. In this episode, he seems to really like talking for our player. Matthew compliments his farm, and then Matthew thanks himself for his own compliment. This could be his way of a joke, but I'm certain that this message wasn't a joke. Our player seems to be complaining about his school. In the beginning of the video, him saying he was told that people were going to be nice, then asking Matthew if people make fun of his name, but indicate people are picking on his name at school, which is why he goes on to say people just, possibly continuing the sentence with something negative, which would make sense why his next message says this school sucks. But he's not the one who says it, Matthew does. Matthew is not talking about school in general, he's saying this school sucks. It's very odd behavior, but that just brings another issue. Where did Matthew wander off to? He disappears in the forest, our player calls his name, and he doesn't respond. But moments after, Matthew is right behind him at a village without mentioning where he went and why he didn't respond. Matthew is being weird. But to understand why, we have to move on to the next topic, the villager occurrence. Our player is looking at a burning house, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's thundering, so lightning probably struck the house. But in the next clip, when they run back home, we can just barely see something off. This house we see right here is very different from when we first saw the village. It looked like all the wood was burnt down. We can also see more houses like this in the background, comparing it to when we first saw the village. It seems that the entire village burned down. Yes, lightning could have struck the house, causing it to burn, but lightning strikes happen while raining, and the rain quickly gets rid of fire, but from how badly these houses were burned, had to have been done by a player. Our player seems to have a flint and steel that hasn't been used, so it couldn't have been him, which leaves us with Matthew. Matthew was the one who probably burnt the village down, but if that's the case, why? Well, this seems to add on to his behavior with his previous actions, but that still doesn't explain why he does it. But right now, there's no way of knowing. Now that we have that out the way, let's talk about the real oddities, the stuff disappearing. Six minutes and 40 seconds into the video, we see fences disappear. This is not normal, and this definitely isn't a quality issue. We can see the moment the fences disappear. I think it has something to do with Matthew, because near the end of the video, when Matthew dropped his dark oak logs, we can barely see that they disappear. This is the second time this happened where I pointed it out in the second episode. Why do things keep disappearing, and why is it that every occurrence where some something has disappeared is related to Matthew. The two times he drops something to our player, they disappear. When Matthew places fences, they disappear. When Matthew builds a house, it disappears. Our player ends it off with something is here. Could this something be what's causing all of this? And why is it only happening to Matthew? Buckle up, because this is where things get dark. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure to subscribe. I'm in a sub race with my friend Flamefrags to 500,000 subs, and he's beating us badly. So only subscribe if you enjoy the video. Now let's move on to episode 4. Episode 4 begins with our player looking around in confusion. He walks to his house to see Matthew. Matthew then types in chat. Have you found anything yet? No, it could be trying to get under our skin though. It's like it's waiting to strike again soon to eat us alive. Again, our player continues to talk in an abnormal way, but we also have something else to focus on. It could be trying to get under our skin. They seem to believe there is something in their world without their knowledge, and from what he's describing in chat, it's there to hurt them. Matthew replies with, maybe during the night. They believe that this thing could be out right now, and when they realize it's nighttime, our player starts rushing to make fences. He orders Matthew to make a tunnel while he builds a fence around the house and they begin doing so. A few minutes later, he builds a bunker underground and wants to show Matthew his progress. He exits the house, but then notices that the tunnel he asked Matthew to make and saw him making was Patch. He looks at him upset before the video ends. Why would Matthew dig out a tunnel, then patch it? Well, that's the thing, he didn't patch it. At 5 minutes and 37 seconds, we can still see the hole is there. And for the rest of the video, Matthew is next to our player, never leaving his sight. And somehow, the hole is still 
hatched. In the beginning of the video, they were mentioning this thing and how it's coming to get them. From what we've seen, it seems like that assumption was made because Matthew's house disappeared. But what evidence is there that the house being gone is an entity being in the world? But for that to make sense, we need to understand who Matthew is. And episode 5 perfectly captures that. Episode 5 begins differently compared to our other videos. Currently, we aren't seeing our player's POV. Seeing a white hand, we can assume that we are seeing Matthew's POV. But what exactly is happening? Matthew seems to be staring at our player from a distance. But not only that, where is his hotbar? We're never given an answer because we see our player go to get wood and we're given this clip. The video cuts from Matthew to our player's POV. Not only that, let's take a look at both perspectives. Judging from where Matthew is standing, we should technically see him somewhere around here from our player's POV, but for some reason, he's not there. He walks into the house and somehow Matthew is inside. Our player starts putting up trap doors on the glass and placing more fences to secure the base. He then writes to Matthew. Are you mad at me that your base is gone? It's so easy. Just do what I tell you. You're just like Brandon even right now. He'd sit there and listen and not do anything like some statue you could just kick down. That's all they wanted. Nothing. I do the tiniest something and they hate me for a dark oak roof. Why did you stop talking to them? You didn't even know you were moving yet. They sounded worried. Everyone you pushed. They sounded like they didn't even know what to say. That's not nothing. Then the screen goes black, but not before one last message. That's fear. Let's pick this apart one by one, shall we? First, let's go over the conversation our player and Matthew seem to have. Our player gets upset that Matthew doesn't listen to what he told him to do. We can even see this in episode 4, the way he ordered Matthew around and got upset when he didn't complete it. That's all they wanted. Nothing. I do the tiniest something and they hate for a dark oak roof. Seems our player could be hinting towards an argument over the house we saw in the early episodes. Matthew responses, say a lot. Why did you stop talking to them? You didn't even know you were moving yet. He stopped talking to his friends before he found out he was moving, which could mean something might have happened beforehand. He adds on to this saying he pushed them away when they tried talking to him and goes on to respond to his message saying, I do the tiniest something isn't nothing. It's fear. Fear of what exactly? It couldn't have been fear of moving, he says he started separating himself before he even found out he was moving. Given our player's lack of response, we can tell what Matthew says has a lot of truth to it. Our player is scared of his past, which could explain why in the second episode he couldn't explain why he didn't just play with his old friends on the Minecraft server that they used to play on, because he left on bad terms. What happened in our player's past that he refuses to share? A more important important question, who is Matthew? Oh, well, Matthew is our player's friend, right? But is he really? There's lots of times where he just straight up ignores his messages and only talks about himself. Is he a real life friend? A family member? Online friend? With such little information on who Matthew is, he can still point out our player's lies, and he knew our player pushed his friends away. This information will make sense later in the video. We also need to bring up what I pointed out in the beginning of the video. He stares at our player and seconds after he's no longer there he just vanishes do you see where i'm going with this at three minutes and 42 seconds matthew is blocking the doorway out of frustration our player goes to punch him out the way and matthew doesn't move he definitely hit Matthew because we can hear the sound of hitting. Not to mention immediately after he just walks through him with no entity collision. All of this evidence seems to keep tracing back to the same thing. Is there an entity in their game? Are they being haunted? Or could it be that Matthew isn't real? We get introduced to a new character named Donnie Darko. He introduces his new friend to his world, but out of the blue, he writes to Donnie, This village we found was burning down. Like from a lava lake? No, there wasn't any there. 
Something's burning things down. What? It's going around lighting up shadows with flames. A very weird conversation, but then the video cuts to our player at this new base we've never seen before. Maybe they're playing in a new world. He gives Donnie gear and some time passes before our player receives a message from Matthew. Talk more. Then Donnie writes. Oh hey, I'll be back in a bit. I have to feed my cat. Then Matthew writes again. Be more friendly. With our player responding no and entering his base, staring at Donnie before the video video cuts. If you think we'd move on to the next episode, you would be wrong, because now we get a second POV. Found out he also recorded a video too as well. Check it out if you want. Joining a friend's Minecraft server, uploaded by Donnie's123, the video showcases the same thing we saw in episode 6, except there's something different. There was a part in episode 6 that I wanted to leave out for this moment. I'll play you two clips in different POVs and I want you to notice what's off about it. In our player's POV, we can see Matthew, but he resembles a ghost, and for some reason in Donnie's POV, we can't see him. How is this even possible? This seems to go back to my theory on Matthew not being real. This theory would answer why people can't see him. It explains why everything that has disappeared in all the episodes were caused by Matthew. His fences and house disappear because it was made by a person who isn't real. If we look closely, we can see the dirt path Matthew created disappeared. It wasn't just his house, it was everything he altered. The blocks he dropped disappeared because he doesn't exist. It's not possible for him to collect materials. That's how he vanished from the trees last episode. He's not a real person. But if that's the case, why is it that our player is the only one who sees Matthew? And if it's confirmed that Matthew never existed, then that would mean this entire time, every episode we watched, our player talk to no one. He has been by himself this entire time. But that still leaves another question. Why is Matthew here? Why does Matthew exist to our player? There has to be a reason. With us entering into the last few episodes of the series, we'll finally be able to understand everything. The video starts with our player and Matthew underground. They seem to have made a tunnel and could be spying on Donnie. Again, Matthew is still transparent. They wait for Donnie to leave before digging into his base. They check out any changes with the base before Donnie comes back. Yo. Hey, what were you doing? Haha, ha, it's been an hour. Dealing with some crops. Hey, same here. After talking a bit, our player drops some gear to Matthew, with Matthew obviously not picking it up. The next scene is them in a cave. Our player keeps mining ores, but never picking them up. Strange detail, but insignificant nonetheless. They then start talking more. What's it like moving? Our player pauses. I don't know. You know, like when you wake up. Like right when you open your eyes and you're in between two worlds. When you're still dreaming? Yeah. I've got a notebook to write down what happens there. Then, our player looks at Matthew. After a little more mining, something happens. I'll play the clip. And I just can't wake up. If we go to the Donnie channel, we can see a second video has been posted. Who is he? And the video showcases the same thing we watched in episode 8, except in Donnie's POV, there's a few things to note here. When our player dropped the items to Matthew, from Donnie's perspective, it looked like items that were dropped for him, so he picks it up. Reminder, Donnie can't see Matthew because Matthew only exists to our player. We can also see Donnie get confused why our player keeps mining ores without picking them up, and he gets really confused why our player turns to stare at nothing but from our player's POV, they were staring at Donnie. But the video doesn't end after our player is blown up. In fact, right before he's blown up, the video cuts and all of our player's loot is gone. We can tell Donnie didn't pick anything up looking at his inventory, but the video continues from where we ended in episode 8. Are you good? Again, they knew what to say and you don't listen. No. I always listen, man. What's up? 
It's obvious our player is having a conversation with Matthew, but Donnie doesn't realize that because only our player can see the messages. Moving forward, the video cuts to Donnie leaving the cave and finding our player's actual base, showcasing this is all taking place in the same world. In the house, our armor stands, but we also see our player's name. Donnie digs down to him, and the rest is what takes place. I woke up. Hey. Here's what's left. Our player freezes before writing. Do you ever wish you could turn back time? Do you know what a Henley is? No. Neither do I. We should build one. There's a lot of things to look over in this video, so I'll try to cover them all. Our player is spying on Donnie. We know this because we can see behind them a long dugout tunnel he made. If we really understand the context of what's happening right now, things get really disturbing. Why is our player spying on Donnie? But we're never given an answer. Our player seems to still believe of Matthew's existence, constantly looking at him and dropping gear for him. There's also something I'd like to point out, which includes two scenes. The first one being our player staring at our player when Donnie writes a certain message in chat, and then our player respawning in a black box. Donnie mentions his notebook being something he uses to write down his thoughts and dreams, and ironically our player looks at Matthew right after. This scene could have more beneath the surface. Maybe this moment could be ironic because that's what Matthew is to our player. A notebook he uses to write his thoughts and feelings to, which could explain why we always see conversations about our player's feelings, and could also explain what is going on when our player respawns. We see the same black box in a earlier episode, but we were left unanswered. But this black box might symbolize our player's thoughts. What we're seeing right now is Simon's imagination, and I say this because the only other time we see our player is when Donnie finds him in his bunker, and his first words are, I woke up. The times we see our player in a black box could be our player dreaming, and all of it being in their head. So that means Matthew is all a part of our player's head, an imagination he created to talk about his feelings. And if you still don't believe my theory, that's fine, because we still have one last video to watch. The video starts with our player staring at his crops. He continues doing this for another three minutes before typing out a message. Do you ever wish you could have seen the future? But instead of entering the message, he deletes it instead. He finally moves out of his spot to see Donnie building a treehouse. He asks him if he has any dark oak, to which Donnie says no. So he checks inside the house for some, but he goes down to his bunker and there he sees Matthew standing in a tunnel. They stare at each other other before our player places down a sign with the following message. Dear friend, I can be better this time. Goodbye. He turns around and Matthew is gone. Our player drops all of his armor on the floor from where Matthew was standing and he heads out his base and glances to his right before noticing something on the ground. An iron leggings and chest plate, an iron axe and pickaxe. These four items also happen to be the same items our player dropped to Matthew in episode 2. Not only that, but our player picks them up in the exact same spot he dropped the items in. But moving forward, our player checks out the treehouse and offers Donnie some help to build the treehouse before the video ends. This video showcases Matthew leaving for good. When our player turns around to see Matthew is gone, it isn't a disappearing situation like we've seen before, because right after, it followed up with items on the ground that match with the items our player dropped to Matthew, and it makes sense why. Matthew is not real, and if this theory is true, then in episode 2, how would it be possible for Matthew to pick up items our player dropped for him? That was a question that made me doubt this theory for a while, but we finally finally understand that Matthew never picked up those items and had been lying there on the ground this entire time. We notice a change in Matthew once we are introduced to Donnie. These first five episodes, Matthew is fully visible and was always active with whatever our player had going on. But once Donnie joined, Matthew became transparent, almost like he was slowly fading away. When our player went to place that sign and saw Matthew was gone, he was gone for good. But why does he leave? 
leave because of Donnie. In our player's first episode, he complained about missing his old friends and how he had trouble with making friends in school. But after meeting Donnie, our player finally shows signs of happiness in himself. That's why before Donnie was introduced, Matthew would always talk to our player with intentions of making him feel better. Because Matthew was just someone our player created to comfort him during these times. Also, Matthew's name, find underscore Nula. We know what the word find means, but what does Nula mean? And a few weeks ago, that's when I searched it up and found this. From the Latin word Nula, meaning none, nothing, or the number zero. It was hinted in Matthew's name. It was just under our nose the entire time. But in the end, Alex finally got his happy ending. But then I also remember that since Matthew isn't real, everything he does doesn't actually happen. Yet somehow in episode nothing, we get a POV of Matthew. But if Matthew isn't real, how does this footage even exist? This minor clip brings in a lot more questions and puts a big stop to everything I've theorized. But unfortunately, there's just some things I can't answer. But hey, what's a good mystery without an unanswered question? <laughs>